Hello, good evening and welcome to Become a Better Man. My name is Tunde Disu. Thank you for being part of today's program. Last week we started looking at focus. We started looking at the topic on focus and we, we talked a lot about what focus is and, and how important it is for us to, to be focused. This week we are uh, going to try and round it up by looking at the power of focused attention the power of focused attention the world we live in now gives the impression that especially in the social in this day of social media and instant result and get it now and get all you can can all you guess it's on what you can and and all of that it gives the illusion or the impression that you can you can have it all. I mean, you can have it all. All you have to do is is multitask. It's a myth. Multitasking, in my opinion, is a myth. You see, what one of the uniqueness, one of the unique things about us as human beings is the fact that we are we are limited. There's a limit to, to how far we can spread ourselves. You can only be in one place at one time. You cannot be in two, three places at the same time. Even in this day and these days of hologram and all of that, as a person, you can be in one place only at one time. So you have limited... Uh, you are limited in your person. You, are, you have limited amount of energy. We all have the same number of hours in a day, 24 hours in a day. Uh, irrespective of how much you want to multitask and divide it and slice it and share it, when it's 24 hours, the day will finish. But more than that is the fact that when you when you critically look at it, when you consider it deeply, when you examine it critically, you will agree at least to some degree that you can only truly, genuinely, completely focus on one thing at a time. Now, does that mean you can't do many things at the same time? Oh, yes, you can. When we do that all the time, you can do many things at the same time. But when, it, when we talk about focusing, when we talk of undivided, resolute, total attention, you can only give that focus to one thing at a time. For instance, that's why the police will say, don't, don't use your mobile phone while driving. I know many of us, almost everybody does it. You're driving, you're answering the phone, or you're listening to music, to music or this and that. But you see, the idea is, or the, 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 the mindset behind that instruction from, from police and the traffic officials is, is because it is not possible for you to be totally, completely devoted and focused on more than one thing at a time even when you think you can achieve it even when you pride yourself on multitasking even when you say if only you know that uh, women can do many things at the same time and and sometimes they do most times they actually do but you see at the at the at the peak at the peak of focus you can only do one thing at a time even during the point when your 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 activities and your your alertness is heightened maybe by ad adrenaline flowing and and the enthusiasm is high the inspiration is flowing and all of that yes you may try to spread yourself wide and and reach further but just wait for it just give it time just let's see how far that will go and how long that will last because when the reality hits you when 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 the when the rubber meets the road as they say you will realize that 
striving to achieve everything all at once trying to 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 answer this and attend to this all at once will only give you one result you'll be exhausted you'll be disconnected you'll be demotivated there'll be a sense of guilt at the end of the day because you realize you've expensed a lot of energy and you have little to show for it you've spent yourself so far you've You've spread yourself to, so thin. You've tried to cover as much area as possible. But at the end of the day, you realize it just didn't work. And that can be very demotivating. It can be very demoralizing. It can, it can make you almost want to give up on trying at all. This idea, this notion, this attempt to want to do all at once, to want to achieve everything in one go, to want to be in many places at the same time, is a syndrome called trying to do too much at once. Trying to do too much at once. So, instead of, of striving and, and pushing yourself and flogging yourself to achieve it all at once, how about if you strive to achieve what's most important to you per time? What about if you strive to do what would give you the ultimate fulfillment and happiness per time? What if you, what if you drive yourself towards achieving your personal well-being and have a sense of meaning and have a... a, a, a something tangible, something in your hands that you can take home and put on the table to say, this is what it all came down to. How about you focusing your attention like a laser beam? You know, last week I used the example of, of using a magnifying glass to, to, to harness the power of the sun rays and focus it on a piece of paper or, or a dry leaf and you see it catch fire. How about if you can if you can just zoom in your energy, your effort, your concentration, your resources, and all of that, if you can just zoom it in into one specific area or aspect of your life, of your task, of your goal, of your dream, the result will be more substantial. It will be more uh, 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 rewarding. It, it will probably even last longer because you really have something tangible to show for what you did, what you've done. So given that we have limited amount of resources and limited amount of attention and limited amount of time, energy and all the rest, the question then is, Talking or uh, looking at this topic on focusing, looking at the issue of the power of focused attention. How do we divide our resources? How do we manage our time? How do, do we expense ourselves in such a way that will greatly affect or contribute to the success that we desire and the goals that we've set for ourselves? How do we do that? How do we manage these raw materials that we know is in a limited quantity, is in a limited uh, uh, supply, and yet we want to maximize it to get the best result, to get the most achieved out of it, to, 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 to sit back at the end of the day and say, yes, it was worth the effort. You see, the more focused we are at one thing, the more we are able to harness the power of our attention, the more we are able to lay hold and be and, 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 and focus our attention on a specific goal, the more energy that we will concentrate on that goal. 
And the more energy you concentrate on that specific thing, the higher the return or the potential return from that investment. Uh, let me use this example. If you look at knives in your kitchen or in your shed or, or whatever, your, the ability to pay attention, to focus your attention can be likened to the sharpness of your knife. The Bible talks about if the knife, if the axe is dull, it will require more energy, more effort, more swing for you to make an impact or a dent on the tree or the, the, the bush you're trying to cut. But if it's sharp, if it's razor sharp, if it's thin sharp, if it's very, very sharp at a swing, you see the effect. At every swing, you can see that tree shaking, uh, uh, ready to go down. But you see, the knife or the axe to be at that effective point means prior to you at using it, prior to the point at which you started using it, you've given that knife or the axe edge enough attention in sharpening it. You've put it to the grinder and you've sharpened and sharpened and sharpened and sharpened it to the point where just the look of it tells you this is ready. The more focus the energy is at the blade, at the cutting edge, of that knife or the axe, the sharper it will be, the higher the cutting power it will have, and the stronger the knife will be, even in your own hand, because you know the quality of what you have in your hand. So if energy is focused on the blade, on the cutting edge, on the edge of that axe or that knife, if energy is focused on it, you get a sharp knife. But if you don't focus your energy on it, guess what you're going to get? A very dull knife or axe. And what that would translate to is that because the edge is dull, because the knife is not sharp, it will lose power when it comes to cutting. It will require more energy from you doing the swing. It will make the labor drag on for longer. But at the end of the day, the productivity will be very minimal. Simply because you did not concentrate energy. You did not turn that metal into a sharp cutting knife by paying attention and grind it and grind it and grind it to the point where it is you got to be careful where you have it in your hand it's the same thing with your life and my life when you try to do too much at one time it's as if you are sharpening too many knives within the limited time that you have. I remember my, my, my maternal grandfather was a palm wine tapper, among other things. And once a week, he would bring out all his knives and lay them down in it. Uh, it has a, like a leather pouch where he keeps them. And he would take them one by one and just spend time. Now, sometimes he has not used that knife that week, but he will give that knife the attention to sharpen it, to sharpen it, 
and he will be telling those of us children running around say these things are sharp stay away from it these knives are sharp don't play with them but what do we do we juggle between sharpening the knife and doing other things we juggle between paying attention to the sharpening of the edge of the knife to wanting to make the handle of the knife smooth to want to make the pouch shining to want to do other things in the process we lose the time the focus the attention the energy that we could have used preparing the knife we we lose that in other areas that we have we have been spending the time on every one of us can be much more effective in every area in everything that we do if only we will spend time if we will be focused if we will be disciplined if we will have the we will pay attention in sharpening that knife in sharpening that axe head if we will just do it give that one knife the required attention some knives it will take you three minutes to sharpen some it will take you two hours but whatever is required for that particular knife give that attention to that knife because until you have that knife has been sharpened to its fullest capacity it will the, the default will show up at the point of usage and unfortunately that is the story of most of our lives we spend a lot of time doing this doing that going here going there doing. we need to show for it sometimes there's nothing to show for it but then you look across the road and you see your neighbor your friend your colleague maybe your brother your sister they seem to be getting results Things just seem to be working through for them. And you're wondering why I'm doing all of this. You see, being busy is not the same thing as being effective. For instance, towards the end of, uh, uh, in fact, the last two programs we did in 2018, we're looking at, is New Year resolution a good thing or a bad thing? And, and you remember we, we, we did two programs on that. But you see, most people between the end of December and the first week of January spend a lot of time working on New Year resolutions, writing them down and making promises and making commitments and this and this and that. What, today is the 10th? If you take a survey now, you'll be surprised how many people have already defaulted in their New Year resolution. Do you know why? Number one, New Year resolution, like we found out, is always pointing you to your weaknesses and the areas where you are failing. Now, there's nothing wrong in that, except that it put the pressure on you to work on that at the neglect of the areas where you are already achieving and making progress, not realizing that by you ignoring those areas, before you know it, every part of your life will come down to not being effective. There is a place for you to work on your weaknesses and sharpen your skills and become better. But if you do that, if, you, if your effort is, dom is, is, is predominantly on that, number one, that effort is driven not by the desire to improve, but by the desire of fear. The, the, the fear of I'm not measuring up, I'm, I'm failing in this area. New Year resolution, we said, can be counterproductive to a lot of people. But you see, doing too much, which is what New Year resolution resolutions mostly are, 
you need to lose weight you need to save money you need to be kind you need to be nice to your neighbor you need to you need to you need to you need to. and that's all you do you need to you need to you need to so doing too much at the same time brings tension it brings tension it makes you unsettled it, it could cause you to even lose yourself because your temper your fuse become very short because you have read all the time saying to yourself, I've not done that. I need to do that. I haven't done that. I need to do that. Because you are spreading yourself too thin. Instead of focusing your attention on that thing that matters the most, on that thing that is so important, on that iron being sharpened, that knife being sharpened, you see yourself running from pillar to post, from this to that, and that to this, and ultimately, the result does not justify the effort. So if you find yourself, if you have the tendency, because you know yourself more than anybody, I know myself more than anybody, if you find yourself Constantly being pulled in different directions and trying to be the firefighter in all those different directions. It is nothing but you not being focused. It is equal to you trying to do too much at the same time. And you see, when you do that, when you are that way inclined, there are certain things that will happen. There are some effects that you can avoid because life is a product of seed that you've sown, which you will harvest at one point. So quickly, let's look at some of the, some of the, the potential effects of you trying to do too much, trying to spread yourself too thin, not having the power of a focused attention. Not paying attention, not zo zooming in your, your focus into one area and make that area permanently resolve. You see, that's another thing. If your attention is, is spread too thin and too wide, you will have so many uncompleted projects, unfulfilled dreams and unfinished assignments just littered everywhere. But if you focus your attention, even if it takes you one month to move the, the needle from one to two, every time you look back at the clock, you can see that the needle has moved to two, which is an achievement, which is a progress, which is a source of pride for you to say, look what I have achieved. So what are some of the effects of not having or exercising the power of focused attention? What are some of the, the effects of spreading yourself too thin, of not being focused, of not being concentrated in your vision, in your views, in your activities, in your endeavor, in your outlook, in one area of your life? The first effect is there is what is called mental noise. When you are trying to do too much at the same time, when you find yourself in this, in this conundrum of trying to just be everything out to everyone and at every time, there is what is called mental noise. And that is the noise that you only you can hear because it's not an external noise is an internal noise. It is the noise that is going on in your head and in your mind. And that noise is that you are constantly thinking about the things that you have not done, the things that you have not finished, the things that you have not started, the things that you have, you have left and, or abandoned, the promises you have, you have made, you haven't followed through on. They constantly ringing in your head and on and ding, ding, ding. And because of that, 
your mind is not settled your mind is not focused so you are constant every time you, you you are reminded or the noise goes off or the alarm goes off in your head to say oh you're meant to call your mother you have a <gasps> now you have to abandon everything you're doing to go and call your mother and then while you're talking to your mother you suddenly oh I've not finished that report and I need to submit it and the time is uh, quarter to two have been the midnight. Mom, I'll call you back. See you bye. Before your mother could say anything, now you're looking for where's that report? What did I do? And you 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 just everywhere. But the mental torture is the noise that's going on in your head. And you see, the louder that noise gets, the less productive you become. Because in order for you to be productive, you need some calmness on the inside of you to direct your attention and your focus to the task that is in front of you. When you try to do too much at the same time, you are unable to focus. You are distracted by too many things. You feel overwhelmed. Your focus becomes diffuse. It's just like a floodlight instead of a spotlight. You look at things and it's like, is it here or there? Is it, am I doing it or am I not? And uh, your perspective is just everywhere. So when that happens, it becomes, it becomes so difficult for you to focus on the task in front of you. And that is, why you, that is where you find yourself. In some instances, when you're looking at the computer in front of you and you can't see anything, meanwhile your eyes are wide open. That's when the, 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 the letters are, they started to move and in and out and sideways and up and down and they're dancing. And you know you are not drunk. You know you are not intoxicated because you are unable to focus you are distracted, your perspective is everywhere, you can't think clearly, you can't make rational decisions because you are not focused. Another problem, another effect of trying to do too much all at the same time is, is that in the process you lose yourself. You lose yourself in the process. You become overly consumed by external achievements. Oh, I need to, I need to, I must, I have to, I have to. You become overly consumed. You become overwhelmed by striving for external achievements. Because you want to be successful. You want to be this, you want to be that. And you live an unbalanced life. The hospital is full of people who pay the ultimate price with their health. The court is full of people who pay the ultimate price with their marriages. The street is full of children that have been sacrificed on the altar of mommy and daddy has to, and so they neglect the time they should be spending with their children because they have to be successful. They have to be in this place. They have to attend to that. And in so doing, you lose your person. You forget to experience life. You stop living. You start existing. There is no sense of joy. There is no sense of happiness. There is no relationship. There is nothing going inside of you. All, all your intestines are crying out. Everything on the inside of you is screaming to say, just give me a break. And then one day, just one day, just one fateful day, and everybody say, what happened? I saw him just now. He was this. She was that. Yes. Because he and she were everywhere. Until the body itself said, okay, 
If you want to go, go. I'm stopping now. I'm resting now. You see, one of the biggest things you can do to yourself, let me help you here. One of the best gifts you can give to yourself is not what's in your wardrobe. It's not what is in your bank account. It's not what is parked on your in your garage or in the driveway. No, one of the best things you can do to yourself and for yourself is to study your own body. Is to know when your body is talking and hear clearly what your body is saying. Because the body is a great slave. But once this slave breaks, it ain't coming back. You must know within yourself when you are physically, just physically, you are tired. You will know. But what do we do? We drink coffee, we take caffeine, we take this stimulant and that multivitamin and you do this, you stand up and stretch. When your body is saying, come on, pack it in, it's okay for today. I've had enough of today. You know, one of the things I know about myself, well, because I have the tendency of, of driving myself, really hard but the moment i can hear myself breathe then i know i'm tired and i don't it, it doesn't matter what i'm doing at that time if i can hear myself breathe i know i'm tired and that is where i stop for that day whatever it is get to know yourself know your body before your body leaves you When, you, when your energy are not properly managed, when your energy is not properly managed, you feel exhausted. You just feel tired. Tired physically, tired emotionally, tired psychologically, tired in your relationships, tired in your views, in everything. You just feel drained completely. And when you are tired, you feel diseased. The ease of your body is, is, is not there. And so that opens up you to viruses and germs. And then disease comes in and then one thing will lead to another. You see, if you spread yourself too, too thin, if you are trying to achieve too many at the same time, you're playing with exhaustion. You're playing with your, your own self. And this exhaustion, can, it will manifest itself in different ways. It will manifest itself in different ways. Before you know it, you feel tired. <gasps> You're yawning. You drink water, it's not helping. You drink coke, it's not helping. You drink coffee, it's not helping. It's because you are tired. Sometimes it, you start having pain even in your lower back. It's because your body is tired. Even sometimes because you are tired, you can't sleep. You lie down and all you're doing is turning and tossing. You, your mouth is dry, your throat is dry, you, you are dehydrated. All of that are signs that you are exhausted. But if you can manage your energy, if you cannot focus enough on yourself to understand what your body is saying, all the things you are running to achieve, to become, to, uh, to they will just... Leave you and walk away. Because you must have enough strength, enough poise, enough energy on the inside of you to be able to achieve what you want to achieve on the outside. 
if you spread yourself too thin, if you are not focused, if your attention is everywhere, if you are, if you are not laser beam focused on anything, if you become too ambitious for yourself, there's nothing wrong with being ambitious. In fact, if you are not ambitious, something is wrong with you. You need help. But if you become overly, if you become too ambitious, if you drive yourself too hard, one of the symptoms that you will notice or one of the things that will be the characteristic of your life is that you underestimate how long it will take to achieve some things. Oh, that one, yes, I can, yeah, we can do that just there, you do this. Uh, no, it's not always like that. So because you have the you because you are unable to to correctly determine how long this journey is, you forget that this is a marathon and you start running like you're doing a hundred meter dash. And then by the time you've run through the first corner, you're tired, you're worn out, you're exhausted, you are completely flat. Then self-inflicted guilt will come and visit you. You start remembering that you could have done this better. You could have managed yourself better. You could have handled yourself differently. Self-inflicted guilt will eat you up quicker than an than acid can eat up a, a, a metal. You commit yourself to, to, to an overloaded schedule. You set yourself up for failure by not paying attention, by not being focused, by not managing yourself, your time, your strength, your energy, your body, your resources. You set yourself up for failure and so when the failure then comes knocking when the reality of the faith of that failure is now sitting in your living room and eating in your kitchen you become subjected to guilt and that guilt is not because somebody is pointing a finger at you it's because you are looking at yourself in the mirror and you say i did this to myself I did this to myself. And that is very destructive, it's very demotivating, and it kills your self-esteem. All because you fail to focus your attention, to harness your energy, to handle and manage your focus. Another effect of you not doing all managing your focus and, and attention is that you you do, you're not just hurting yourself. No, you are hurting a lot of other people around you. You are hurting your family, your wife, your children, your husband, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your colleagues, the society at large. When your attention is, is fully occupied with, with so many targets and you, you're... Suddenly you don't have room for anybody else. Everybody else is, is, is on the back of the queue. Because you've got so many things you need to attend to. You've got so many areas you need to plug. You've got so many assignments you need to complete. You've got so many phone calls you need to make. Oh yes, you've got so many meetings you need to attend. The people that matters in your life, suddenly they are irrelevant. You sacrifice them on the altar of running about. If you have a relationship, it goes away. If you don't have one, you never have time to develop one. That's why some people will wake up one morning and, and the, the calendar will say, hello, good morning, you are 42 years old. And they're wondering, 40, 40 what? 
and I haven't done this. I have not married. I don't have children. I don't know. Because you have spent all your energy, all your time, all your focus, you have never harnessed them and organized them and planned them and used them to build a life. You've used them to meet a moment and now they're gone. I say to people, I thank God for my life. I'm grateful to God for my family, my wife, and my children. If it is possible to reincarnate and live a second life, I will do a lot of things earlier than I did them this time. A lot of things. Because you realize some of the things you put up, some of the things you think I'll do them later, some of the things that you, you sacrifice on the altar of things that don't matter at the end of the day. In the general scheme of things, they just don't amount to anything. But now, they've eaten up your time, your energy, your resources, they're gone. And the reality is now in front of you. When you do too much, trying to achieve too much at once, you hurt a lot of people in your life. When you have too much on your plate, when you are constantly chasing after things you don't have, things you don't need, when you are constantly chasing after things, that you haven't done or you've forgotten to do or you, you, you forget to celebrate, to even acknowledge and recognize and appreciate the things that, have, that you have achieved, that you have accomplished, that are right in your domain. That's why I like that saying, count your blessings and name them one by one and say how good God has been to you. As human beings, we, we are too, too consumed with what we don't have. We are too preoccupied with what we haven't achieved. But what of the ones you have? What of the ones you've achieved? What of the things you've done in your life? When are you going to see them? When are you going to celebrate them? When are you going to even enjoy them? If all you do is run after the things you haven't got. When your attention is too spread out, you ended up not being able to excel at anything or achieve any tangible goals. So you become dissatisfied. You lose your self-esteem and you suffer self-inflicted guilt. You become what they call jack of all trade, master of none. When you overcommit yourself and you spread yourself to things, you try to achieve uh, achieve everything all at once. When you overcommit yourself to more than that you can handle, that you can manage, more than you have time and energy to uphold and, and enjoy, you end up sacrificing the most important goals in your life. You sacrifice your partnership in business. You sacrifice your, 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 your marriage, your children, your, your, your friendship. Some people have lost contact with their parents. Because they're too busy. When you hurt people, because you spread yourself too thin, when you don't have time for, for people in your life, they will conclude that you are just, you're unreliable. 
you're flaky, you're self-centered, you have you are just uncaring. To use mild language. Now, don't get me wrong. There is, there is a place, there is a legitimate place for you to be inspired, for you to want to take action, for you to want to take control, for you to want to be better, for you to want to start. There's a legitimate ground for that. What I'm saying is, don't be here, there, here, there, where, there, and on everywhere. Because you'll be ineffective in all of them. When your focus is diffused and, and just scattered over so many goals, you will not get a fair result on any of them. You'll be exhausted, you'll be unsatisfied, you'll be angry, you, you'll complain, you'll be unbalanced, you'll live a life that is just not life, existing. And in most cases, this is the irony of it all, in most cases, the people that are running from pillar to post and, and trying to achieve everything in, at one go, the, the driving force in most of them it's not because they want to achieve those goals. It's not because they, those goals are even theirs. It's because they're looking across the fence and they can see what their neighbors are doing. They look across the fence and they can see their neighbor's garden is great. They look across the, the, the street and they can see what their new neighbor is riding and, and they, they, they take that on board to drive themselves to the ground. You are trying to find inspiration and, 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 and the courage and challenges and, and, and whatever from several people around you. Great, well done. But you must remember, you must always be conscious that these people that you are looking at, that are inspiring you and encouraging you and challenging you, you don't know their stories. You don't know their journey. You don't know how long they've been on that journey to arrive at the place where you find them now. If you don't know a man's seed, don't judge his harvest. If you don't know a man's story, don't condemn his testimony. Some of these people, they have traveled this journey longer than you. They are more experienced in this area than you. They have invested a lot of a, a, a lot of capitals that are bigger and deeper and stronger than what you have. But you just look at their shiny shoes and now you, you must do everything to get a shiny shoe. Stop trying to be like the Joneses. The Joneses themselves are tired. But when you change tactics, when you focus, when you are determined to pay attention and get things done properly, when you are completely focused on one goal at a time, you won't just start living, but you will also start to achieve and make progress and see results and enjoy life. I'm not going to finish this year. <sighs> mm. No, we're going to finish this next week because still got so much to cover. <laughs> you see, when it comes to your life and my life, when it comes to ourself, our being, when it comes to who we are and what we are, 
when it comes to goals and purposes in life, when it comes to achieving our goals and becoming all that we can become, there is a great pride in you giving it your best punch, in you driving at it with all you've got. But just make sure, be completely certain that you are not just busy doing nothing, but you are busy with every swing of the axe on that tree. And every time you hit it, there's a chunk of that tree that is flying out. Every time you hit it, there's a chunk of that tree that is being removed. That's what will guarantee success. That's what will lead you to the final destination of seeing that tree on its back. But if you're trying to cut the tree down, you're trying to climb the tree, you're trying to harvest the orange from the tree, and you're trying to plant the tree itself, and you're trying to put fertilizer around, you can't do all of that at the same time and get any result. Because the tree will still be standing, the oranges will still be on top, the fertilizer will still be in the bag, and nothing, you, you won't get anything done. And then you get frustrated and tired and complain and, and take it out on, on your wife, the cat, the children and everything else around you. It is not the noise of the people around you. It is not the chatter, the, 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 the noise of people talking around you, about you, in, no. The most powerful distractor in your life and in my life are the chatters in our hearts and in our heads. The battle is between your ears. The loudest noise is in your head, not, in, not from the loudspeaker. Because when, you're, when you allow your mind to wander and just coast and just usually it goes looking for the negatives and it amplifies them. Or if you don't do this, this is going to happen. If you don't do that, that's going to happen. But if you can grab all of, the, of your mind and bring it into subjection and focus it into the specific area of your life that you want to see change, you want to see effect, you want to see difference. Suddenly, all the noise will just go shh. Because now you are in charge, you are in control of your focus, of your attention, of your purpose, of your goals, of your drive, of your vision in life. Focus, focus, always, always have impact, make impact, result in impact. But if your focus is everywhere, you will not have what they call 2020 vision. And if the goal for 2019 if our goals for 2019 is to become better men and better women, one of the things we must address, we must arrest, we must strive, we must contend with is to harness the power of our focus. Is to focus our attention on the things that matters, that will make a difference in our lives not on all the paraphernalia and all the paparazzi that surrounds us on a daily basis. Because that is only when and only when the chatter going on in our heads can be tailored to go in the direction that we're going and we want to go. Be focused. Focus your attention. 
focus your attention, there's a great reward thereafter. That's why the Bible says, be careful what you hear and how you hear it. It's talking about focus. It's talking about focus. Be focused. Be deliberate. Be, 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 be intentional. Especially in the world we live in where there's so many, so many distractions. The social media, the email, the noise on TV, the noise on the internet, the did and that. But in the midst of that, if you have a laser beam focus, you will cut through all those noise. You will cut through all those barriers. You will cut through all those distractions as if they were not there at all. Have you seen a laser beam cut through metal before? I don't care how, how thick and strong it is. If you focus that fire long enough, directly enough, it's coming now. Be focused. Focus your attention. Pay attention. Be specific. Be deliberate. And you will enjoy the fruit thereof. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being part of today's program. I know a lot have, has been said today. I've, I've, today's, uh, uh, I only did half of what I prepared for today because there's still so much for us to cover. But I respect your time and I honor your commitment. So we're probably going to pick this up from where we stop today we're going to pick it up from there next week Thursday but in the meantime think of what we've talked about tonight spend the next 10 15 minutes to just examine yourself your life your pattern the things you do and how you do them and see if you can identify if you can pinpoint some of the things that we have talked about tonight and start making changes Start thinking seriously how to make changes, how to do it better, how to do it differently. Because 2019 must not be like 2018. 2018 was great, it was wonderful. But we are called better men and better women. And so the only way to go is up. And remember, we don't give up. We don't cave in. We don't throw in the towel. We refuse for life to have the best of us. Because we're people of destiny. We're people of purpose. We have goals. We have destinations to arrive at. And so we're going to be focused on our goals, on where we're going. Because we know, without a shadow of a doubt, that when we arrive there, come on now. Every man and every woman that will see us, they will have no choice. They will have no choice whatsoever than to say, surely these are better men and better women. Thank you. Please, if, not, if you have not shared this program, click the share button now. Help somebody to, to also start 2019 on a good ground, on a solid foundation, on a purpose driven life for this year when all it takes is from you is a click of a button go ahead and share it now and thank you for doing that i'll see you again this time same time next week until then be strong we are going somewhere god bless you bye bye